Revolution on Represent 107.3 FM. My name is Tarek. Now, listeners, you may remember not too long ago, we had a spoken word artist by the name of Sully Breaks. Came down, dropped a live session, and a lot of you were excited about that. I was excited this morning when I opened up a package, had no idea what it was. Opened it up, put it in the player, pressed play, and it totally blew me away. It's his brand new piece from his brand new The Dorm Room EP. I'm going to have to let spoken word do what it does best and let it speak for itself. Brand new Sully Breaks. Right now, there is a kid finishing parents' evening in a heated discussion with his mother, saying, why does he have to study subjects he will never ever use in his life? And she will look at him blank-eyed, stifle a sigh, think for a second, and then lie. She'll say something along the lines of, you know to get a good job you need a good degree, and these subjects will help you get a good degree. We never had this opportunity when I was younger. And he will reply, but you were young a long time ago. Won't you, mum? And she won't respond, although what he implies makes perfect sense that society's needs would have changed since she was 16. But she will ignore him, grip his hand more sternly, then drag him to the car. But what she doesn't know is that she didn't ignore him just to shut him up. She didn't lie because they were just returning from parents' evening and an argument in the hallway would look bad on her resume. She won't lie because she just spent the last one hour convincing a stern-faced teacher that she would ensure that her child studies more at home. No, she would lie simply because she does not know any better herself. Although her whole adult life she has never used or applied Pythagoras' theorem, pathetic fallacy, and still does not know the value of X, she will rely on society to tell her that her child, who has one of the sharpest minds in the school, is hyperactive, unfocused, easily distracted, and wayward. Students, how many equations, subjects, and dates did you memorize just before an exam never to use again? How many A grades did you get which were never asked for when you applied for a job? How many times have you remembered something five minutes just after the teacher said stop writing, only to receive your results one month later to realize that you were only one mark short of the top grade? Does that mean remembering five minutes earlier would have made you more qualified for a particular job? Well, on the application form it would have. We all have different abilities, thought processes, experiences and genes. So why is a class full of individuals tested by the same means? So does that mean Sherelle thinks she's dumb because she couldn't do a couple of sums? And if this issue is not addressed properly, it then becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Then every school has the audacity to have a policy on equality. <laughs> the irony. Exams are society's methods of telling you what you're worth. But you can't let society tell you what you are Cause it's the same society that tells you that abortion is wrong But then looks down on teenage parents The same society that sells products to promote natural hair, looks and smooth complexion With the model on the box half photoshopped And has fake lashes and hair extensions With pastors that preach charity but own private jets Imams that preach against greed but all fat Parents that say they want educated kids But constantly marvel at how rich Richard Branson is Governments that preach peace but endorse Wars that say they believe so much in the importance of higher education and further learning, then why increase tuition fees every single year? I believe Miss Jefferson when she took me into the office and said that my exams would be imperative to my success because we was taught to always follow when Miss Jefferson led. But then I took Jefferson out of the equation and learned to think for myself. I realized we was taught to always follow when Miss led. Huh, the irony. Test us with tests, but the finals are never final Cause they never prepare us for the biggest test, which is survival And what I suggest is fairly outlandish So I do not expect everyone to understand this Except for the kids who knows what it feels like To be worth no more than that D or that A that you get on results day And the ones whose best stories were never good enough for the English teacher Cause apparently you missed out key literal techniques Did not follow the class plan And the language was too informal for him to understand But then he'd reference Hamlet and Macbeth And you'd fight the 
urge to express your contempt by partially clenching your fist with only your medius finger left protruding in the middle of your hand and then asks if he was aware that Shakespeare was known as the innovator of slang or the kid at the back of the class who thinks why am I studying something that doesn't fuel my drive but then when confronted with a maths problem his eyes come alive so this one is for my generation the ones who found what they were looking for on Google the ones who followed their dreams on Twitter pictured their future on Instagram accepted destiny on Facebook this one's for my failures and my dropouts for my unemployed graduates my shop assistants cleaners and cashiers with bigger dreams my self-employed entrepreneurs my world changers and my dream chasers because the purpose of why I hate school but love education was not to initiate a worldwide debate but to let them know that whether 72 or 88 44 or 68 we will not let exam results decide our fate. Peace. Just these pictures on my phone, sitting all alone, visualizing home. And all my friends were just these pictures on my phone, pictures on my phone.